Okay, welcome back to the project and specifically to the beginning of MP2. So this is an exciting checkpoint. Um, we're gonna go a little bit deeper than we did last time. And um, on this checkpoint, we're actually gonna add an entirely new feature to your existing application. Now, uh, don't panic. Uh, there's a lot of good starter code and good resources that we're gonna use. But essentially when we're done, we're gonna allow the user to click on the map and add their own favorite place, including entering a description and, and all that sort of stuff. So this will be cool. It's gonna introduce, introduce us to some new ideas in terms of networking and give us a chance to create our own activity and do some fun things in Android. And you'll learn a lot along the way and we'll guide you. Um, okay, so what I've done uh, before starting this was that I uh, found the MP2 test suites and I've moved them into the right spot. Now, uh, I actually did this in a way that might be a little different than you did, but I am gonna add, um, Let's see, it's a view files. I'm gonna add this file uh, to my repository to make sure that Git is tracking it. So you'll see now it's green because it's new. However, um, as with MP1, when I uh, install this new test suite, there's a few problems that I'm gonna have to fix with my existing code base. So let's see what they are. Um, so one is that there's this new method on my client that I need to add called post favorite place. Um, and then there's also uh, a new activity that we're gonna add to the app because we're actually gonna add a new screen to allow the user to enter the details about this new place that they're adding to the map. Okay, so let's just do this together. It'll only take a few minutes to get to the point where the test suites will compile. And then we can push, uh, sort of commit and push our first set of changes for MP2. Um, now, you know, technically, probably as soon as you install the MP2 test suites, you should commit, but we'll just do the stubbing out along the way because it's pretty simple. Okay. Um, I'm gonna open up uh, client.kt and I'm gonna create a new method that's actually modeled in many ways after this get places method. So I'm gonna grab get places and I'm gonna put a get places method, another get places method down here. Now this method is what the test suite wants me to call it is uh, not get places. It wants me to call it post favorite place. So I'm gonna call this post favorite place. And if you look at the test suite, it expects the first argument to this to be a place. And this is different than uh, get places. So in get places, what we were doing is we were making a request to the server to retrieve the places on the map. Post favorite place is different. It's actually gonna send data from the client to the server. So the HTTP protocol can be used to move data in both directions. We can request data from the server, which is what we did initially so that we could populate the map. We can also send data from the client to the server. And this is essentially, uh, the combination of these two requests is pretty much most of how the internet works. When you go to a website, it uses get to fetch the contents. When you purchase something on a shopping website, or when you submit a form, or when you run code on the CS124 webpage, it uses uh, this post method to send data to the server. So I can get data from the server, I can get data to the server, and by combining those two methods, I can build these really cool sort of experiences online or as part of my app. Um, okay, so getting a little too excited about this. So post favorite place takes as its first argument a place. Uh, and that's just our existing place model. That's the place containing the information that we're gonna send to the server. The result is a callback, but instead of a callback that returns a list of places, this callback is only going to return a Boolean. And the reason is uh, when we design get places, the goal was to retrieve data from the server. In this case, the goal is to send data to the server. And so the only result of this is whether or not it worked or not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass back a Boolean that indicates if it succeeded. And then we'll also be able to store an error if it failed in the same way that we did in get places. All right, so this method is good to go. Uh, uh, Kotlin also actually has a to-do uh, method thing that I can, uh, I can put in here. And this is actually just another way of throwing an exception. If I get here, it's just gonna throw. Um, and this is handy just as a way of marking something that I haven't done yet because we won't come back to this for a little while. All right, I'm gonna go back to MP2 test. Uh, I see that most of the errors are gone, but I have one error left, which is I need this add place activity. So this is something that we're gonna, again, we're gonna get to later on in MP2. It's here because there's a new screen that we're adding to our app. Remember, activities correspond to a screen in the app, something that the user can interact with. Currently, we just have the map view, 
But in order to allow the user to enter their details about their favorite place, like the description, for example, we need to add a new screen. I guess we don't have to technically add it. We could have done it as part of the map view, but I think this is a little nicer. So when the user clicks on the map, we'll launch a new screen for them to fill out the details about the place, specifically the description, and then be able to submit that to the server, at which point it'll be on the map. Okay, so our existing activity is over here. It's called main activity. Uh, I'm gonna create a new Kotlin uh, class called add place, is it add place activity? What's it called? Let's see. I like that I can scroll around in here so I don't mess this up. Oh, I gotta go back over here. Uh, oops, I guess that dialogue went away. Add place activity, okay. Um, so let's go here, hit new uh, Kotlin class file. It's called add place activity. So I need to make sure I put it in the activities directory, otherwise it, it, it won't uh, get used. And as always, I need to make sure that Git starts tracking this file. So I'll hit add, which will tell Git, hey, pay attention to this file, include it in the repository and track any changes that I make to, to it later. Now, if I go to my main activity and scroll up to the top, one of the things you'll see is that in order for an activity to work in Android, we need to extend a superclass. In this case, this thing called app compat activity that has a zero argument constructor. So I need to add that here as well. So I'll just use the extends uh, syntax in uh, Kotlin. And now I have my empty add place activity. Let's go back to the test suite and we'll see that all the errors have cleared. Let's make sure we can run the test suite. So we're gonna create a run configuration for the test suite. There's a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, the way I'll do it is I'll start with the one for test MP1 and I'll make a copy. So this, I'll call this test MP2 and instead of running MP1 test, I'm gonna run the tests in the file MP2 test and now I'll hit uh, go and let's make sure this works. Now, what am I expecting to happen here? I'm expecting all these tests to fail uh, because I haven't you know, done any work on this checkpoint. Unlike some of the previous checkpoints where we gave you some tests that worked, on MP2, we don't. There are no tests that work on MP2 out of the box. So you'll see that all of them are either crashing or failing. Um, that's expected. And we're gonna start working on them one by one and guide you along the way. Okay, so let's go ahead and just run the grader for fun. Uh, I'm gonna run my grade uh, task. Now I should get some points for a detect, I think. Um, we'll see, uh, maybe not, um, but uh, because of maybe some unused variable warnings or something like that. Uh, but let's see what happens here. So I'm expecting, um, oh, sorry. Ah, wait, see, this is why I do this stuff. It helps me remember when I've missed a step. And in this case, the step I missed, and I missed this in the video for Java too, but I'm gonna get it for Kotlin um, because I try not to make the same mistake exactly the same way twice because there's so many new ways to make mistakes. Um, I forgot to reconfigure the grader for, for checkpoint two. Okay, so I am in fact uh, done with checkpoint one, except it looks like uh, there are some detect issues, but let's grade checkpoint two. So I made this change to grade.yaml, which I need to, to tell the grader which checkpoint to, uh, to use. Um, and it looks like uh, this is gonna come up all zeros. Okay, that's okay. Uh, the, the detect errors that I'm seeing are because I have some unused parameters. That's okay, those, those will go away. Uh, if we, but let's actually go ahead and clear these um, so you can figure out how to do that. So if I go over here, you'll see that uh, there are these unused parameters. Um, what I can do is I can usually, what I'll do is I'll put, I'll put a suppression on this um, so that I'm just gonna ignore this for now. Let's try running the grader again. That should clear this, let's see. Um, and this is a feature of detect where, you know, if I come across an error and I don't want to worry about it right away, oh, looks like detect is still upset about something. Let's run the linter and find out what that is. Um, all right, so detect is failing uh, and it's failing because, oh, and this is uh, add places empty. Um, that's, that's, this is okay. Let's see if I can, um, suppress this as well. Uh, what's the name of this? Empty class block. So let's add a suppression, empty class block, um, and run the linter again. These are only temporary. Uh, okay, now it's passing, right? So let me run the grader. Um, I just want uh, the, the Java, you know, I feel a little worried showing you how to add these suppressions. The Java code you know, uh, didn't come with any check style error. So I just feel like it's fair for the Kotlin code to also get 10 points out of the box. So there it is. Okay, so now we have our 10 points. 
Um, all right, so at this point, what I'm gonna do, go ahead, open up the commit dialog, and let's make sure that we have the test suites in place. I also wanna make sure I commit them because I may make some changes to the test suites later, and if I do that, I want to be able to get back to the original one so I can run the grader locally and see an accurate score. So you'll see that I made, I added an add place activity, I added mp2 test, and I made changes to client.kt to add that post favorite place method and to grade.yaml to tell it to grade checkpoint two. I'm gonna select all these and I'll say starting mp2 by installing tests and adding missing methods and activity. Excuse me. All right, uh, cool. Hit commit and push. Uh, it may, yeah, this is okay. It's upset about this to-do thing I put in. That's okay. I'm just gonna ignore it. Um, and uh, this will now earn me 10 points on MP2. So we're off and running. Uh, we have the test suites installed. Um, things are compiling at this point, And we're able to start making progress on the test suites as we begin MP2.